4.2 talks is on page 28 talks about compound event we did a portion of this and I left the second half to give you a chance to finish the first probability so this becomes a bit easier to digest and let me read how this goes a compound event is any event combining two or more simple events probability of simple events are really simple the name gives it away because there's only one way of doing it which makes this very easy to do compound is a bit of a challenge because there are multiple events happening at the same time notation if I say find the probability of A and B this denotes the probability that event A occurs fast first followed by B so the order here is very important so symb symbolically probability of A and B would be the probability of A times and I'm gonna talk about what this means probability of B given that A has already occurred first and I'll show you where that makes a difference and that doesn't make a difference meaning the probability of event A followed by the probability of B is found by multiplying the probability of A given that event B have occurred if I write B given A that is denotes the conditional probability of event B occurring after the assumption is that event A has already occurred so let me clarify really quick how this works I'm gonna start with an example even though we have examples here but I'm gonna make one I'm gonna add an example right here in which we're gonna pick we have a jar and within the jar we have five blue marbles and we have uh, 10 red so we have a total of 15 marbles we're gonna pick two that's the example well part a without a replacement what that means I'm gonna take one ball and keep it in my hand and pick another ball and keep it in my hand and let's go for the easy case what's the probability of getting a red and a red well let's see how this works common sense if I don't have a choice I multiply it if I have a choice if it's or I add I have 15 how many of those are red five I'm sorry haha <laughs> just kidding the other red 10 now without replacement that means I held that ball in my hand or marble in my hand now when it's time to pick the second there are only 14 left do you see that that number changed and how many are red the fact that I already have a red in my hand tells me that in the jar there are nine left so this is the probability of a red that's true this is probability of a red but that's not true probability of just a simple event of red is 10 out of 15 given I already have this red in my hand that's why this probability changed so that's what this means now if these are independent if one doesn't affect the other so part B if I say how about if we pick the two with replacement probability of a red and a red well a red is 15 there are 10 of those the fact that I put the ball back or the, the marble back and I mix them that probability doesn't change this is still the probability of R this is the probability of R given I already picked an R but that having picked an one red and put it back in didn't affect that probability and that's what this is indicating and that's what this is indicating if the probabilities or if the events are independent one of them does not affect the other so two two events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of the other event in part a they were dependent that's why it made a big difference on how we list that in part b they were independent the fact that i replaced the marble back in did not affect the probability of given a red given i already picked a red or vice versa 
So, if events A and B are independent, then the fact that A occurred does not affect B in any way and vice versa. Versus, if two events are not independent, we say they are dependent, then this probability will be affected by this. So, independent, dependent, that's how it looks. Independent, it really wouldn't matter. I just say probability of A, probability of B, and multiply them, and that's that. So here they start off, they want to see if we have the same common sense as they do. Are those events independent? Why or no? Why not? Well, you roll a die and get a four. Okay. You flip a coin and get heads. A and B are independent. Why is that? Well, whether you get a four or not, it does not affect your flip or toss of a coin. Here, robbing a bank and going to jail, well, those are dependent. Right? If you rob a bank and you're caught, you would go to jail. That one depends on the other. Next example, find the probability of rolling a die and getting a four probability of rolling a die and getting a four then flipping a coin and getting a head well let's write it the way we should that's a probability of getting a four on a die times because we don't have a choice probability of getting a head given that you already got a four on a die well there are six faces on a die and there's only one way of getting a four if you flip a coin there are two possible outcomes and head is one of them the fact that you get a four does not really affect the outcome in any way those are independent so i could have just said if i want it that's probability of a four times probability of getting a head out of six faces on a die one of them is a four one of them is a four and if you're going out of two possible outcomes one of them is a head same deal so if it's independent, you could just do that. It's that simple. And how about this problem? Find the probability of drawing a card. Find the probability of drawing a card. Drawing a card. Okay. Find the probability of drawing two cards. Find the probability of drawing two cards from deck of cards without replacement that means you hold that card in your hand and the first is a queen of hearts then a spade well let's see probability of a queen of hearts times the probability of spades given you already have a queen of hearts in your hand a deck of cards contain 52 cards how many queens of heart are there? There's only one of those. Now, it's true. When I want to pull the other card, how many spades are there? There are 13 that didn't get affected, but the denominator did. The fact that you already have a queen of hearts in your hand indicate that when you pull the second card, there are 51 choices, not 52. You could leave the answer like that. You could throw that in a calculator. You could you know, use whatever you like. So, just to practice, make sure. Show you how you input this, so you do that as well. You should be able to do all of these things. So, 13 divided by 52 times 61. You want to make sure that you use parentheses. When you do those, uh, let me put it right here. So, if I take, uh, you can't see that. Here we go. If I take uh, 13 divided by, and I use parentheses, 52 times 51. Done deal. It is 0 0.0049, 0 0.0049, which is roughly 0.49%. That's less than a half a percent of that happening. So that's this page. Uh, one more to go and we're done with this section well let's get that out of the way here we go 
So here's an example. They say a bag contain assorted oh assort uh, an assortment of Jolly Rancher candies. Specifically, there are five A for apples, eight W for watermelons, ten C for cherry, and fifteen G for grapes. Fifteen, twenty, thirty-eight altogether. If I'm not mistaken, that's what we have. Okay. You get to random select three of those without replacement. That means you hold them in your hand. What's the probability of picking three grapes? A grape and a grape and a grape. Now, if I write it without the notation, on the first key, let me just make sure. On the first out of 38, how many are grapes? There are 15. Now that I held it in my hand without replacement, right? There are 37 to choose from, and only 14 of them are grapes. And for the third, that's 36 and 13 in my hand. Again, you could leave the answer like that. You could throw in a calculator. Now, I do want to point out that this is the probability of a grape. But this is the probability of a grape given you already have one in your hand. And this is the probability of a grape, given that you already have a grape and another. That's why the denominator changed and that changed. So that's what it means to be dependent. One, the occurrence of one event affects the other. Find the probability of not getting any apple. Probability of not getting any apple. Well, let's see. Two ways of doing that. Let's do it the long way in this section. Not getting any apple would be, well, let's see. Uh, this is how we're going to write it. And, and there are 38. How many of them are not apple? Well, if the apples are only 5. So there are 33 that are not apple. Grapes, cherry, or watermelons. So 33. The fact that I'm holding that in my hand, second choice, I have 37, and I have 32 that are not, or 36 and 31. Now, again, there's another way of doing this that's coming up in the next section. I'll point that out. Complements. I don't know if we talked about that, but we'll see how that goes. I'd like to look at the next example. It says, in a table, in the table is the highest level of education of 50 applicants for a job. 50 people applied for a job, and this is what they have. 35 of them happen to have a bachelor's degree, 15 have a master's degree, so altogether we have 50 of them. If two of these 50 candidates or applicant names are chosen at random, without replacement, so you hold it in your hand, then what is the probability that the first holds a bachelor's and the second holds a master? Well, probability of a bachelor's times probability of a master's given that you already have a bachelor's in hand because they said without replacement. So you pick a candidate and you don't put him back in the mix. Well, there are 50. How many of them have a bachelor's degree? There are 35. And now that you picked one, there are 49 choices because I already have a bachelor's and a 15. Again, you could plug this in a calculator. You could leave it like that on a test. I can care less. What would be the probability if replacement was allowed? That means you take a candidate and you put the name back in. Well, that's the probability of B times probability of M. That is... There are 50, and we're going to choose 35. The fact that I put the applicant's name back in the uh, choices, there's still 50, and 15 of them will happen to match a master's. We have a rule we're going to follow for some time. If a sample size, if a sample size is no more than 5% of the population, 
we treat the selection as being independent. That's very important. Saves us a lot of work. A quality control analyst randomly selects three different car ignition systems from a manufacturing process and that has just produced 200 systems including five defective we have five defective which means 195 are not defective professor good what is the probability that all three ignition systems are good probability of the first being good and the second being good and the third being good well for the first out of the 200 systems 195 are good second choice I have 199 how many are good 194 and for the third choice I have 198 and 193 are good this is a probability of choosing a good ignition probability of a good ignition given you already picked one and this is the probability of a good ignition given that you already picked two. So if I plug this in my calculator, I'll notice that's parentheses 195, oops, times 194 times 193, divided by 200 times 199 times 198. 0 0.8. 9264 9264 so roughly 92.65% chance of that happening and this is why they're saying we follow this rule they're saying look how much work you did imagine if we want to use the 5% rule and do the same thing well What's 5 divided by 200? Two point five percent. And the rule says, if the sample size is no more than 5% of the size of the population, then treat it as being independent. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. I picked the wrong sample size. The sample size is 3, right? You're picking 3. 3 divided by 200. My mistake. That is 1.5%. That's even smaller. So if this sample size if a sample size is no more than 5% of the population, well then what are we going to do? We're going to say the probability of a good and let's use T for good and good. Well, let's treat them as independent. What will vary? Well, the answer will be different for sure. Out of 200, 195. Out of 200, 195. So independent means the fact that you picked one does not affect the others. And what we get here is 195 times 195 times 195 or 195 cubed divided by parentheses 200 cubed there 926859 926 nine two six eight five or ninety two point six nine percent so you notice you are off by roughly zero point zero four percent which is almost non-existing so that's how the game is going to be played and that takes care of section four point two the homework is listed right there so I broke the homework for you in two sections, one for last time and one for this time. This is going to be the homework that you're going to do with section 4.2.